every single day I need to do the same repetitive task here in Excel. That is to download this data set right here and then to create some analysis. And to create this analysis, I need to use a new sheet, I need to use functions and formulas, a chart, and all this takes a lot of time. So instead of merely do all those tasks every day, every week, every month, I can automate all those steps using Excel. I just need to select here the file that I create and then click here, run. And that's it, I done. So this is how we can automate tasks in Excel using macro. It's pretty much simple to do and I'm gonna show you step by step how can you do it yourself to apply this automation into your routine or on your daily basis. Because I'm pretty much sure you're gonna be able to save a lot of time. So let's learn how can we do it step by step, let's go. In order to automate tasks here in Excel, I'm gonna use a data set. And if you want to download and use the same data set that I'm using here, you can click in the link in the description down below, 100% free. That way you can use the same data set that I'm using here, but you don't need to. If you want to use your own data set to automate your own stuff, you can do so. It doesn't matter, okay? This is step by step here it is gonna work. It doesn't matter what type of automation you need to do using Excel. So the first step is done. That is have a data set. And then the second step is to enable here uh, developer tab so we need to enable this new tab that we have in excel so let's say i'm gonna click here the home tab and in any blank spot i want to right click and then i can go to customize the ribbon and with this new window that's gonna pop up here for me i'm gonna instead of use popular commands i'm gonna choose uh, let's say all tabs and here you're gonna have the developer tab for example you can choose this option and then click add and then click ok and that's it simple as that now we're going to have here the developer tab. Here we're going to use basically two different uh, tools. That is the record macro and also macros. With those two different tools, we can record a macro and also access, have access to the macro that we recorded. Okay, now with those two steps done, let's start to think what we can automate here. What do we need to do? So as I use my data set here, I'm going to do what I need to do, okay? And you can follow with me to just learn how to automate stuff in Excel. And then you can apply this knowledge that you acquired and then apply to your own stuff. Basically here, this data set is about uh, delivery. So I have a couple of different rows with information for each one of the deliveries that I had, such as, let's say, the order date, the purchase date, also the product ID, the quantity, the box quantity, uh, the dispatch date the delivery date and on and on, also the state name, also the freight cost, and also the payment method. I'm going to use here not all the columns, but just the column J, where I have the state's names, and also the column L, where I have the freight cost, and also the column M, where I have the payment method. Because with those three columns, I can, let's say, know how much freight cost there is for each one of the payment methods, and also how much freight cost there is for each one of the states that I have here in my report. Okay, now it's time to do the automation, but before we actually click in record macro, I think it's very important to change here the name of the, the sheet because the macro is gonna use this name right here as a reference. So let's say today you have a specific name, but tomorrow you're gonna have a different name or next week, next month. If you're gonna use a different name, it, it, it's not gonna work properly. So you're gonna need to rename the data set with the same sheet name. Let me double click here in this sheet. One, two, data, enter. Simple as that, okay? Just one second and then you're done. Now we can move on and record the macro itself to make us an automation. Developer tab, and then I can click here, record macro. And with this new window right here, I'm gonna input the name of the macro. Let's say create analysis or analysis. Now, instead of give here a space to separate those two words, I actually can't do it. If I click here, OK, Excel is gonna give me an arrow. And it's basically we need to, instead of using space, we need to use underscore to separate the words. Now, let me click here, OK. And now everything that you click, everything that you did here in this spreadsheet is gonna be saved on the macro. The first thing that I want to start with is to duplicate this spreadsheet right here. And to do it, it's pretty much simple. You just need to press and hold the control key. Okay, control key. And then you go here to the sheet, click, hold, and drag to the right. That way you can duplicate this spreadsheet. And this one right here, I can actually change the name. So double click, one, two. And this one can be analysis. Okay, enter. 
And the next step that I want to do here is let's redraft all the, those columns that we're not going to use. So let's say column A, B, C, to the column I, for example. And then in the, the letter that represents the column, I'm going to right click and then delete. I also going to delete the column B, right click, delete. And again, now the, this new column B here, I'm also going to delete it. Okay, simple as that. Let me click in the column B again, just to separate the state name from the payment method. So let's click here in the, in the column B, right click, insert one more time, right click, insert. Okay. Now let me select here, let's say the column A and B. In between one column and another, I'm going to click, hold and drag to the right, because that way I make sure I can increase the size of those columns. I'm going to do the same thing for the column D and E, like this, a little bit more. Okay, I think it's fine. And these are the informations that we're going to use to create our analysis but here we have a problem because i want to have let's say the total freight for each one of the states as i said before i need the name of the states to use as the reference uh, but uh, we have a couple of repetitive values here we need to read off the repetitive values and to do it we can let's say select everything in the column a like this and then click data and here to the left on the data tools i can click here on the remove duplicates and i can click ok and that's it now we have here just a unique appearance for each one of the values i'm going to do basically the same thing here for the column d where i have the payment methods to read off everything that is repeating so let me click in the column d and then data data tools i'm going to click here remove duplicates and then click ok ok again and yeah that's it now let's start with the first analysis that I want to create here. That is the total freight for each one of the states. So in the column B, in the first cell, I want to type in here the title that I'm going to use or the header, total freight. And actually here in the column E, I also going to use the total freight, but uh, for a different category, that is the payment methods. Now come back here to the first analysis. I want to know how much that is for total freight for each one of the states. So there is a function that can help me with that. That is the sum if function because the sum if function can sum everything that met with a criteria such as Alabama. So if we have a order or a delivery that is from Alabama, the total freight is going to be added here. Okay. And all those values is going to be added up together. Equal sign sum if function double click wants you to select. The first thing that sum, the sum if function is asking us is about the range. And the range that I'm going to use is just here in the data. And the range is about the criteria. So I need to select the column J, comma. And I'll uh, need to select the criteria, the first one that I'm going to use. And the criteria is here in analysis. In the first cell, Alabama. Okay, like this. And then comma again. And the sum range that I'm going to use is here in the data. And it's going to be the freight cost, column L. Okay. Enter. So here we got the totals. Uh, freight for the first state that we have. If I right uh, double click here in the down right corner of the cell, double click it, I can make sure once you all the rows now contain basically the same function and uh, it's working properly. So those are the values of the total freight for each one of the states. Let me se select here everything, all those, all those values, and then on tab, I'm going to change everything to format as dollar. I'm going to select here the, the, the header. Home time, put everything in bold, change the background color to a green one, and also change the font text to a white one, like this. I think it's much better. The next thing that I want to do here is adding a conditional formatting to those numbers that I have here. Let's say the smallest value is going to be in a headwish color, and the largest one is going to be green. Let me select everything here, and then home tab here to the right. I have conditional formatting. I can click here, and I can choose color scales. I can choose uh, the first option because we have here the scales that goes from green, yellow, and head. Click here, and yeah, that's it. The smallest file is going to be head, and the largest one is going to be green. Now, I'm going to do something similar to the second analysis. That is the total freight for each one of the payment methods. And here, I'm going to use, again, the same function, equal sign sum if function. Let me double click here, one, two. The range that I'm going to use is the range where I have the criteria that is here in the data and the column M, okay, and then comma. Now I need to come back here to the analysis and select my first criteria, that is the cash. 
drama. Now my last argument here for the sum if function is going to be the sum range. And the sum range is here in the data. And I'm going to use the column L like this. Enter and we're done. Let's again double click here in the down right corner of the cell. One, two. And change all those values to the dollar sign, to the dollar format. Let me select the headers. And now we're going to create here a different design. Let's say a blue one with a white font text and everything in bold. I think we're pretty much done here. Maybe the last thing that I'm missing is a chart. And as the chart, we have a lot of different options to choose. Let's say we have the column chart, the bar chart, even the tree map chart. I think it's a good chart to use here. But I'm going to use something maybe different. That is the Dana chart. So I want to compare each one of those values that I have here, each one of those categories in the payment method. And I uh, see the percentage that each, each one of those represents on total, let's say. Uh, I can select everything and then insert. And I can add here a chart that is the Dana chart like this. Click here. Let me click in the chart, click hold and drag up. We just move it up a little bit. And I'm going to increase the area of the chart like this. I'm going to also change the design of the chart. But to do it, I can click here in the chart design and choose a different one, such as style 8. I think it's still good. Also, the numbers. I want to make some change here because, of course, I have the percentage. But instead of actually only have the percentage within the slices, I will also want to have the value itself, the amount of money. So let me right click on those values and then format data label. And here I'm going to mark to the value. Click here. And instead of using the separator as the comma, I want to use a space or actually new line to separate each one of those values in a different row, a different line. I think it's now it's good. Let me close here. Something that I can do is move this legend right here to the left or to the right to occupy less space so let me click here and chart design and chart elements legend to the left let's say the way okay now let me click within here this hollow in the done chart and increase it a little bit like this because it's going to be much easier to see the data okay now we're done and i can click here in the first cell a1 developer tab stop recording so we're done Whenever now I run this macro, all those steps that we did here together is going to be automated. So you don't need to worry anymore to do one, two, three different analysis because now Excel can do everything for you. So let's check if it's going to work properly. Let me read it off this spreadsheet. Let's see if it's going to work. Right click, delete it, delete it. Okay, so let's check if it's going to work. Developer tab, and then I'm going to click here, macros. And here we have the macro that we just did before. Let's click here, select the macro, and then click Run. And let's see if it's going to work. Let's click here. One, two, three, go. Yeah, it's perfectly working. So this is how we can automate things in Excel. And it doesn't matter if you need to create one, two, three, four, five different analyses or more, because it's going to work. And here, I just show you how to create the conditional formatting using the summary function. But uh, actually, you can use different tools in Excel and also how to create a chart. Uh, done a chart to be more specific but you can use a different another different chart too doesn't matter okay now something very important is if you just close this spreadsheet you're gonna lost everything that you did you're gonna lost the macro and uh, you can't click in the flop disk or in the diskette to save your file because it's not gonna work you actually need to change the file to xlsm okay to save the macro and uh, we can do it just click here in file and then you can go to save as and here you can click on browse you can choose a location in your computer to save this file but the important thing is save as type instead of using excel workbook you're gonna click here excel macro enabled workbook okay you're gonna choose this option right here this is the important thing and that's it you can also change here the name give the name that as you want to to use and that's it but the important thing is to use this file right here xlsm then you can click here save and we done so this is how we can automate tasks in excel and i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos let me know comment down below and i see you tomorrow as every day has a new video i see you guys